What's going on everybody? We are back from Florida. What an awesome time that was. It was really cool to see everybody run their car down there. Really cool to see the MR2 rip. That thing is gonna be so fast once he actually launches it. And that's my other point. So we gotta get back to work on this thing so we can at some point this summer race that MR2 and hopefully beat him. The thing is gonna be really fast though and already makes a lot more power than I think this will make on the stock motor. But that doesn't really matter. We're just gonna try and have some fun and I'm really excited because it's gonna be a hell of a lot of fun bringing this thing down there next year. Now, while I was gone, a whole bunch of parts did show up. I'll show you guys here in just a little bit. But as you guys can see right here, these are my front skinnies. I was borrowing Jamie's, it's under there, it's that black one. But I did go ahead and uh, get some 24 inch skinnies, just bought some new ones. Couldn't find any used ones, it looks pretty good. Uh, at that right there, I like to bring the nose down just a little bit more, but I'm having issues with the shock. I'll show you that here in just a second. Another thing I wanted to address, I know a couple people did comment about these knuckles. So these are the ones I had and I showed you guys. And I thought that these were 94 to 95 knuckles, but I guess these are like the uh, the generation up, so they weren't the actual knuckles I wanted. And these are the 94 to 95 knuckles. This one actually does end up having a, uh, a wheel speed sensor spot for it, so that is nice. So that way it'd be super simple to hook a uh, wheel speed setup on this. The knuckles are just a little slightly different. I, I guess um, this one doesn't stick out as far, which I think is some of my issue right now. I thought it was gonna help us, but it actually does not help with the camber setup. I did get these caster camber plates. Uh, they kind of lined up pretty crappy, but they work. I got them to work. Had the machinist modify these little bushings for me to get them all to work. And this is what I wanna show you guys. So it, it might be really hard to pick up on the GoPro, but right now the, to the top of the tire is still has too much camber out. So it's sticking out this way a little bit too far and I don't really have any more room to come down with it because the more you come down with the car, the more the camber comes in. So there's a couple ways to go about fixing that camber. I could modify this plate some more and angle it in more. I don't really have much adjustment still with that. Another option is modifying the shock or making the control arm longer, the lower control arm longer. If you make the lower control arm longer, it's actually gonna push the bottom out more and bring the top in more, and that's what we need. I really don't want to chop up the control arms and add anything to them because I don't know how strong they would be after that. So the first thing I'm going to do, right, which some of you guys might not like this, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to chop these brackets off of the shocks I bought. Now, I did not pay full price for these. I bought these used. I got them for $100 for both of them. So I'm not in them very much. And as you can see, this bracket right here is welded on. I already called Strange and they said that these are welded on before they get filled with all the uh, fluid inside of it. I did talk to the dude, he said that he can't tell me that I can weld on it, but he said if I am easy with it, he thinks it should be fine. They are not a gas filled, so they're not under pressure. They just have oil in them. So it is a very thick um, like shock body, this piece of pipe here. So I'm not really too worried about it. Now what this is gonna do is this gonna allow us to lower the car more because right now with how this is, it's actually bottomed out on the shock and that's our issue. So the lower we go down with the car, the more it's gonna fix that camber. So I want to try and chop this bracket off right now and slide the bracket up and see if that fixes our camber issue and see if we have any issues with hitting on the fenders. They are very close, but I think once it tucks this camber in more, it won't hit or I will just have to get these rolled, which won't be a big deal. Those are the plans for today though. I'm gonna go ahead and start getting started on cutting the shock mount off of the shock body. Hopefully I don't cut too far into it. It looks like there's a lot of pipe there so I can't really cut into it too far. Shouldn't be too big of a deal. I'll show you guys the results of that in just a second. Did get the shocks cut. I'll show you that here in just a second. But check this out guys. I'll show you guys what I did to fix this camber issue in just a second. Now, as you can see, it is poking out a little bit. I had a feeling this was gonna end up being like this, which is okay with me, as long as I can still get the front as low as I need it. So that way it doesn't look super weird like a reverse rake on it, so the nose is higher than the rear. I think I'm gonna end up having to raise the rear up anyways, which is okay. I guess, I mean, it is, it is really tucked, but I didn't really wanna raise it up all that much. I still have quite a bit of gap here. I have like 
a finger and a half gap here. So I think that should be okay if I had this at right height with all the weight and stuff in it. I think this would be okay. Now let me show you guys this cut shock. So right here, you can see I cut this right here and I was able to move it up about an inch. That's all I wanted. And then let me see if I can show you guys up in here. But if you can see up in there, I'm at the right height I wanted at and I still have quite a bit of room up here before I bottom the shock out, which is what I was fighting when I lowered it down too much. It basically had no room for the shock to go down so it would bottom out right away. That is the whole reason for this right here. I went ahead and to fix this camber issue, I unbolted the lower control arm and scooted it out an inch to make it an inch longer to actually push the bottom of the wheel out, which would bring the top in. And that's what fixed this camber issue. What I'm gonna be looking at next here is, this is the hole for the control arm. I'm gonna see if I have enough room here to drill it an inch off to the side. I'm gonna be cutting these old mounts off anyways. And so those are gonna be in the way, but I might be able to just drill the lower control arm hole an inch off to the side instead of having to chop the control arms and lengthen them an inch. So I'm gonna check that out right now and I'll let you guys know here in just a second. So I went ahead and took some measurements. As you can see, these are the old uh, motor mounts that I was using. I wanted to make custom ones anyways. And these are kind of in the way for the steering rack I wanna add here too. So they're gonna have to go regardless. And now I took some measurements here on the backside. You can't really see this, but the lower control arm bolt is right here. And I have about two inches of room before I run into right here on the K member. So that means we are in luck. Unfortunately, that's all I'm gonna be able to do for tonight, guys. I gotta head out. I'll be coming back tomorrow, taking the K-member off, cutting those brackets off, and drilling some new holes. That way I can get one side finalized up for you guys. Now, I'm sure you guys are thinking this is a lot of work just for a five lug setup and some shocks, and I know that, but I believe this is gonna help the car tremendously. So I also will have a wheel speed sensor and a little bit bigger brakes up front and nicer wheels. So it might sound a little crazy to you guys, all this time and effort spent into this but to me it's worth it and uh it's gonna make the car look that much better you know like i told you guys before this next season it comes out i want to be proud of it i don't want to have some hack together stuff or just some stuff that looks eh or just get me by for now i want this to not ever have to come back and touch these control arms or do anything like this again so that's the plan guys i'll see y'all tomorrow Thank you. So we are back. It's the next day. I went ahead and got this cross member off. I was going to drill the holes myself, but I definitely was not going to drill them straight. So I took them to my machinist, had him drill the holes an inch out, and it looks like it fixed our issues. So let me just show you guys really quick. This is the other hole. You can see it's already got the bolt in it. It's about an inch out from the other one. Don't mind this over here. I cut the old motor mounts off of the... Uh, cross member as you can see on both sides that way we could drill the holes through them and uh yeah this is everything all bolted up now i still don't have the shock mount welded yet but i'll be doing that tomorrow for this video i just want to show you guys everything's all bolted up how it would be in the car these are the uh upper caster camber plates all on there i'll talk about that here in just a second but check this out so i only got one lug nut in there but it's in there straight and you probably can't tell from the GoPro, but it is a lot straighter in there. It looks almost straight up and down now. I actually did put a little like a digital angle finder on this piece of the wheel just to see. I mean, obviously not gonna tell me what the camber is actually, but it was at 89.1 degrees. So it's pretty close to being up and down. I'm happy with that. The only thing I wanna do next is I actually gonna be taking the other caster camera plate off I'm gonna be taking these to the machinist tomorrow. I'm gonna have him open these up more. So that way, I'm gonna have him slot these holes further this way on both sides and then open this up more so I can get a little bit more camber out of it. Now I wanna do that just in case when I go to put this on the alignment rack, the camber is like still a little off. I got it to where it looks good to my eyeball, but I'm sure I could still be off quite a bit. So I'm maxed out here on my camber adjustment. So if I just bring it out a little bit more, That'll uh, make me feel a little bit better. Overall, I'm really happy with this. What do you think, guys? Do you guys like it? I think it looks really good. Gonna be really nice for next season, having some matching wheels, some adjustable shocks. 
a steering rack. It might be kind of hard to tell, but the rear is still a little bit lower than the front. I just don't think I'm going to be able to get it uh, low enough with the rear like that. So I'm probably just going to end up having to raise up the rear just slightly. Uh, we'll just, we'll see once I get everything in it and get it all done, but really happy with it. So what I have left to finalize this Mustang five lug swap on the RX-7 is to weld that shock, which should be an easy job. I'll let you guys know how that goes. Get the caster camber plates modified by the machinist again, and then uh, just do the other side. I'm gonna do another video in like an actual write up on the other side. So I haven't even touched the other side at all. It's just dangling over here on the ground. I haven't even put the uh, Mustang ball joint in the other control arm, just because I wanna do just because I wasn't exactly sure this was actually going to work. So now that I know this is gonna work and not be all weird and whatnot, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start on the other side too. I'm gonna take some measurements for some springs and that's about it. Other than that, after I get the other side done, I can go ahead and make the steering rack and the steering shaft and then we have some nice front suspension for the RX-7. So let me know down below what you guys think of the RX-7 with the matching wheels. I hope you guys like it. And yes, I have some people asking me on Instagram, is there still gonna be a cage? Yes, there's gonna be a cage. I just don't have the time right now to dedicate a month to two months on doing a cage. So I wanted to go ahead and get the front stuff done, get the motor back in the car, and then work on the cage. Anyways, I'm just happy to make some progress on the RX-7. For a second there, I was worried that I was gonna have to scrap all the time and the money that I invested in this Mustang stuff but I'm really happy it's gonna work. And I hope you guys are excited for this next season and for the other stuff to come on the RX-7. So we'll be doing the cage here soon, the turbo kit up soon, and then getting the motor back in the car. As always, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also go check out my website. I still got some t-shirts for all y'all who want some. Go check out my Instagram, at Meticulous. And that's all I got for you guys. So we'll see you in the next one.